While the majority of the world public laughs at the obvious Russian setup in the attack on the concert hall in Moscow, there are growing doubts in Russia itself, according to the official version of the event, which is full of holes. Let's start. A large police department with its own armory is located inside the Crocus Expo building that is connected to the Crocus City Hall, where gunmen killed nearly 200 people and left in a car parked out front. Law enforcement only showed up one and a half hours later. VCHK OGPU Telegram channel, which is likely run by former FSB officers and has a strong track record of exposing the Kremlin, categorically asserts an armed police K-9 unit was present at the entrance through which the gunmen were allowed to enter Crocus City Hall with machine guns. The Cheka OGPU became aware of a gigantic scandal in connection with the attack on Crocus, which is being hidden by the authorities, and especially the Ministry of Internal Affairs of the Russian Federation. On the recorder filming of the moment when a white Renault stops at Crocus and armed terrorists jump out of it, a large van is visible nearby, and next to it is a man. Several of our sources immediately reported that this is a van from the canine service of the Ministry of Internal Affairs of the Russian Federation, which that day participated in security measures for the picnic concert. Filming from the hall of the first minutes of the attack clearly shows an employee of this service with a dog. The presence of a service weapon is not clear from the shooting, who, as soon as the shooting began, quickly runs away. Moreover, the Pavshino Police Department is located right in the Crocus building. According to the Cheka OGPU, at the time of the attack it was fully equipped employees. Weapons are stored there. However, none of the policemen went to protect and save civilians who were attacked by terrorists. Only four people. The police chose to run away. That is, Vladimir Kolokoltsev's subordinates, instead of protecting people, those in danger, and this is their direct responsibility, fled to save themselves. Ukrainian journalist Butasov on the Crocus massacre. Spot on. The informational bomb of the terrorist attack covered up to the world the crimes and massacres that Putin commits every day. Putin's bloody coronation. Instead of discussing the murder of Navalny, human rights violations in staged elections, instead of discussing the terrorist bombing of Ukraine and the mass murder of civilians in Ukraine, Putin created a reason to extort condolences from the whole world for him personally. The informational bomb of the terrorist attack covered up to the world the crimes and massacres that Putin commits every day. And all this, as the Russian media assures us, is thanks to four Tajiks, for whom someone granted citizenship and registration in the Russian Federation Someone prepared for a terrorist attack in Moscow. Someone gave them weapons. Someone did not interfere with killing. And someone, then he helped to leave the blockaded Moscow in a politically necessary direction. And what goes around, comes around. Russian convict recruited from prison in Penza for the invasion of Ukraine, Alexei Shatilov detonated a grenade as police tried to detain him in Russia-occupied Luhansk, killing himself and injuring five Putin regime enforcers. Work by Ukrainian border guards repelling Shahed drone attacks in the Dnipropetrovsk region last night. Reportedly, five in this area were shot down. And after the latest attack on Crimea, we know that armed forces of Ukraine hit six large landing ships of the Russian Black Sea Fleet after the start of a full-scale war. In March 2022, Russian landing ship Saratov sank. In September 2023, the Minsk landing ship was damaged in dry dock. In December 2023, the Novocherkask landing ship sunk. In February 2024, the Cesar Kunikov was destroyed. On March 24, 2024, the Yamal and Azov ships were the fifth and sixth ships of this type to be hit by the Ukrainian forces. And back to Russian terrorism. 
Russian fascists launched several hypersonic missiles from occupied Crimea. They covered the distance of 580 kilometers to Kiev in three minutes at an estimated speed of 7,200 miles per hour. Hence, the air raid siren system did not turn on in time, suspected to be Zircon cruise missiles. In Kiev this morning, children run to the shelter as explosions from Russian ballistic missiles are heard. This time, the Russian fascists likely launched the missiles from the relative proximity of occupied Crimea, hence the air raid sirens did not go off in time, did not go off. Emergency and rescue operations in Kyiv have concluded following a missile attack that resulted in 10 people injured, including a 16-year-old girl, with two individuals hospitalized. The State Emergency Service provided psychological assistance to 25 people affected by the attack. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warthog Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members only videos, and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description. Every day we had a guy last week at six rescues in six days. You know, he's doing the job every day.